Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we started on this problem where we had a circuit that had now three nodes where, for which we had to find the, the uh, voltage. We had three currents plus the one that was defined as I sub X, which was also uh, a source for the dependent current source right here that's equal to two times I sub X. Eventually, when we applied all the methodologies doing nodal analysis, we came up with these three equations for the three voltages, which we can write in this matrix format. So now we've achieved step number seven. We set up a linear set of equations that we can solve. And the reason for having this video is to take those equations and actually solve them for V1, V2, and V3 using the determinant method or Kramer's rule, as we call it. So the first thing we want to do is take this determinant or this matrix right here and find the determinant of that. D is equal to, we take those values, 3, negative 2, negative 1, 4, negative 7, 1, negative 6, 9, and negative 3. And then we add to that the first two columns again. So this is what that looks like, but when we add these two columns again, we get 3, 4, negative 6. That's a negative and we get negative 2, negative 7, and 9. Now notice that this is a nice neat trick on how to calculate the determinant when we have a 3 by 3. This is equal to the product of these three plus the product of those three plus the product of those three. So maybe with some color I can show you what that looks like. So we're going to take these diagonal numbers, these diagonal numbers, and these diagonal numbers, multiply them together and add them all up, and then we're going to subtract the product of these diagonal numbers, these diagonal numbers, and these diagonal numbers. That's how that works. So let's go ahead and do that. This is equal to 3 times negative 7 times a negative 3. And let me get a calculator out, because I'll probably need it. Uh, let's get rid of the red pen. That's a negative 7 times a negative 3, that's a positive, so 3 times 3 is 9 times 7 is 63, that's a positive 63. Here these are negative, positive, negative, this again is going to be a positive, plus 12, and here this is going to be negative 36. And subtract from that, when we multiply these three diagonal rows, we get minus, 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 that's a negative. The negative is already taken care of because we're subtracting the products here. So that's a negative 42. Here we get a positive 3, positive 1, positive 9, that's a positive 27. And here we get a negative 3, a negative 2, that's positive, and a 4, that's 8 times 3 plus 24. That's the determinant, and let's add all those numbers together. Whatever we get here, we're going to change the sign. We get 42 minus, so a negative 42, plus 27, plus 24. That gives us a positive 9, but with this, that gives us a negative 9. So make that negative. Subtract from that 36, minus 36, add 12, and add 63. And that gives us a positive 30. Again, a quick check to make sure we did this correctly. We get 63 plus 12, that's 75, that's 45, that's 39. And that's subtract from that, whatever we get here, that would be 51 minus 4, that's 9, 39 minus 9 is 30. So far, so good. Now we need to find the three voltages, so we need three more matrices. What we need to do here is we need to take this matrix and replace the first column by these numbers right here. That means on that matrix we get 12 a 0 and a 0. We took the first column and replaced it with the constants 12, 0, 0. The other two columns remain the same. A minus 2, a minus 1, a minus 7, and a 1, and a 9, and a minus 3. Now we're going to add to that the first two columns again. 12, 0, 0, a negative 2, a negative 7, and a negative 9. And now we're going to do the same thing, multiply the diagonals. And again, let me show you with a red pen what that looks like. Multiply those together, multiply those together, and multiply those together. And then subtract from that, we multiply these together, we multiply these together, and multiply these together. With all the zeros in there, this should be a whole lot easier. The first has no zeros, so 12 times a minus 7 times a minus 3, that's 21, times 12 equals, that's 252. 
the next diagonal row has a zero in it, and the next diagonal row has a zero. So plus zero, plus zero, minus. We multiply these together, again you have zeros there, no zeros here, that's 9 times 12, that's 108. And that has zeros again. Oh, wait a minute. So that's 0, 108, 0. I didn't put the 0 down. Let me just go ahead and do that. So 0 plus 108 plus 0. And when we add all that together, 252 minus 108. And that gives us 144. For the second voltage, what I need to do now is I need to replace the second column by the constants. I get 3, 4, negative 6. Instead of negative 2, negative 7, 9, I get 12, 0, and 0. And I still get the minus 1, positive 1, and negative 3. What I do now is I repeat these two columns over here. 3, 4, negative 6. 12, 0, 0. And just like I did before, I'm going to multiply these diagonal rows and then subtract when I multiply these diagonal rows. Like that. And it helps to draw little crosses. You can visually see what you're dealing with. So multiplying this together, I have a 0. Here I multiply 12 times a minus 6. That is a minus 72. Uh, might as well put the 0 down. So 0 minus 72, and here I get a 0. Subtract from that, when I multiply these diagonals, I get a 0, and here I get a 0, that was plus 0, and here when I multiply those together, I get a minus times 12 times 12, that's a minus 144. Notice a minus times a minus gives me plus, minus 72 is a plus 72. And now for the last matrix, so find V3. And now we'll replace this column by those numbers right there. I repeat the 3, the 4, and the negative 6. I have a negative 2, a negative 7, and a positive 9. And instead of nine, negative 1, 1, and negative 3, I write 12, 0, and 0. And again, like before, I repeat the first two columns, 3, 4, negative 6, negative 2, negative 7, and 9. And then with a different color, we're going to multiply these diagonal rows like so, and then subtract when we multiply these diagonal rows like that. When we do, we get the following. This gives me 0, because there's 0 in there. This gives me 0. And finally, the last one, that's 4 times 9 is 36 times 12, that's 360. Well, let me see here. Make sure I don't make a mistake. 36 times 12 gives me 432. And subtract from that when I multiply these together. I get 42 times 12, that's 420. Well, again, let me uh, make sure I don't make a mistake there. That's 42 times 12, I give 504, 504, multiply those together, I get 0, multiply those together, I get 0, and that adds up to a minus 72, yep, minus 72. Now I'm ready to find the voltages. What I need to do is take each of these three values and divide them by the determinant. To find voltage 1, that is equal to this matrix divided by the determinant, which is equal to 144 divided by 30, which is equal to 144 divided by 30. That gives me exactly 4.8, 4.8 volts. Then V2 can be found by taking the set, second matrix divided by the determinant, a positive 72 divided by 30, which is ex exactly half as much. And finally, V3 is equal to the third matrix divided by the determinant, which is equal to a minus 72 divided by 30, which is a minus 2.4 volts. So now I have all three voltages for the three nodes. Now I'm ready to find the currents. Because of definitions, I can say that I1 is equal to V1 minus V3 divided by 4. V1 is 4.8 volts, 
minus V3, which is a minus 2.4, divided by 4, which is 7.2, 3.6, that would be 1.8 amps. I2 is equal to V2 minus V3, divided by 8. V2 is 2.4 volts, subtract from that a negative 2.4, divided by 8, that gives me 4.8, divided by 8, that is 0 0.6 amps. I3, V2 divided by 4. V2 is 2.4 volts, that's 1.2, that's 0 0.6 amps, and finally, I sub x. I sub x is equal to, let's see here, I sub x, V1 minus V2. Divided by 2, I believe, that's correct. V1 was 4.8 minus V2 is 2.4 divided by 2. That gives me 2.4 divided by 2, which is equal to 1.2 amps. Now, let's write some of those values in our drawing right here and see what we get. I1, 1.8 amps. I2, 0.6 amps. I3, 0.6 amps. 2 times I sub x. I sub x is 1.2, so twice that would be 2.4 amps. And here, 1 I sub x, that's equal to 1.2 amps. And, let's see if we did this correctly, 3 amps coming this way, 1.2 plus 1.8 adds up to 3, that's correct. 1.2 coming this way, 0 0.6, 0 0.6, that adds up to 1.2. And here we have 1.8 plus 0 0.6 adds up to 2.4, and 2.4 plus 0 0.6 adds up to 3, and it looks like we have all the correct voltages and all the correct currents. And that's how we do a problem like that.